We're in the famous Glencoe region of Scotland this month where we've managed to catch the last two days of the season for red stags and the first days of the season for red harvest. Once again this year, the Capriolas Club is travelling to the Highlands of Scotland by the Caledonian Sleeper from London Euston. With new rolling stock having been introduced recently, what exactly do you get? Well, for a few hundred pounds, there's a restaurant carriage and a bijou cabin that provides bunk beds and a small ensuite. Make no mistake, it's pretty tight on space, which in my view would make sharing impossible. Nonetheless, if you're sick of flying, it's a fun way to travel. Be warned, however, Scott Rail seem to have no clear or sensible policy on travelling on the Stalker Express with a firearm. So make sure that you check with them first before travelling. We've done just that, and in order to make things even simpler, we have with us a Sour 404 takedown, which locks away nicely in a small case. For the duration of the trip, which spans the change in season from Red Stag to Hind, we're staying at the famous King's House Hotel, a beautifully refurbished landmark which sits on the West Highland Way in the famous Glencoe region of the Scottish Highlands. And the scenery here is utterly breathtaking. It's usual to check zero before you set out, which with the beautifully engineered Sauer in 308 presents us with no problems. I also take the opportunity to ask our stalker Enis about his own personal preference on calibers. So Enis, what uh, caliber are you shooting? A few eight. If you want, if you want few eight caliber. But uh, not so struck? Hey, I'd prefer to use a 7 mm or a 260. I've used them in the past. Yeah. Yeah. 260 is slightly unusual. Yeah, yeah, you can't buy factory ammunition, so you have to home load. But home load anyway, so yeah. it doesn't make any difference. But you reckon ballistically that's pretty impressive, do I've you? I've seen them, she used them quite a lot in the past, and they've been pretty yeah. good. Uh, the 3 weight just drops quite a lot over distance, which is. What, at what grain are you using in the 3 weight? Um, I'm using 110s I started off with, but then I moved up to kind of 140s. Right, yeah. yeah. 110 makes it a bit flatter, I suppose, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, that was the idea. But Didn't work for you. Still, still a bit slow <laughs> for me. In the warm weather, the stags occupy the high ground, and with this region renowned for its monroes and vertical climbs, it's seriously tough going. Make no mistake, in this part of Scotland, you have to be properly fit to stalk. climb higher, the weather deteriorates and the stags, now aware of our presence on the hill, go higher still. So it's testament to Trevor's perseverance that eventually 
he gets into position for a shot. And it's a great shot, securing Trevor's first ever Highland Red. So Trevor, your first stag. My first Scottish stag. <laughs> Easy to get, yeah? No, you get every day. We pick up on the 21st of October, day three of our trip, and the first day of the season for Red Hines. And this time, it's club member Charlie who has the rifle. Onto the hives today. Onto the hives. Excited. Very much so. You Lovely had a bit of luck weather. yesterday as well, didn't you? A bit of luck with stag yesterday. Now onto the hinds. Good. Glorious surroundings. No yeah. rain, fingers crossed. Bit of uh, bit of snow on the uh, high ground, isn't there? Just a scattering. Do you find that uh, you're picking up stranded hikers every now and then as well? No, I don't get too much problems with that, to be honest. I mean, yeah, there is the... the usually that falls onto the mountain rescue. Does it? Yeah. yeah. David, who uses the Black Corys, he's part of the mountain rescue. He quite often gives me a wee shout every now and then, saying there's someone lost here or there. Yeah. Um, but no, the mountain rescue are pretty good at their job, so they, yeah. they deal with most of it. But is it sort of hikers who've uh, got lost or uh, got stretched them, overstretched themselves? Or? That's it, aye. It's quite often with the heat as well, heat exhaustion. And, and the hills are quite deceiving here, you think they're not as big as what they are. Actually, twice the slide. You get the plan, Charlie. So, see that first rock slab that's over there? Yeah. And then on the left hand side, if you've got a birch tree that sticks up out of it. Yeah. Well, straight above that, there's like a hang in the car and a spike in. Oh, yeah. So if the little bite is going through this part, then once we get into that burn, that will keep us out of sight right up to where it forks, see where it forks off. Yeah. And then we should be able to come around there. It looks like they're grazing to the left, so they've come more and closer to us and more in sight. So we should be able to shoot some up in that burn. And you can see the stag higher up on the nose as well. With plans made, the tactic this time is to get above the hinds and then work our way down from above. Fortunately, the weather has improved, but the requirement to get to the top of the Munro makes for a seriously intense climb. Finally though, we're rewarded when Enos spots a group of red deer just below us. short traverse and a scramble to get into position. And at 170 yards in high wind, Charlie dials in the Swarovski scope. As the deer fast disappear over the horizon, he does well to take his shot, which he places perfectly. Extracting deer from these remote locations high on the Monroes is the next challenge, but when the going gets tough, there's no option 
other than to shoulder the load. So, Charlie, a well-earned pint. Well done. Yeah, it has. Cheers. Congratulations. You've had a, another good day on the hill. Hind Absolutely. and stag now. In fact, two hinds today. Yep. So we had a stag on Wednesday. It was a long day, about 20-odd kilometres, and I think 300 stories climbed. Not quite as long today, but we marched up one, uh, one valley along a berm, then up over the top to get into another valley to come down on top of them and he was convinced they wouldn't move out, so we were able to get down and finally get in the gullies and get on top of them and get it's two uh, shots and get two hinds, which was great sport. It's not for the faint-hearted stalking up here, is No, it? my skin was leaking, I'll admit, for <laughs> quite a lot of it, and he, he's as fit as a fiddle, so he's sort of marching along and he's a task driver, but it was, uh, no, really good sport. Really like fun. mountain goats, these stalkers, exactly, aren't they? Exactly, and they've got an iron constitution, so <laughs> they can keep going, while my London <laughs> London lungs are wheezing. Well, I mean, fairness, I mean, you're, you're pretty fit, aren't you? I mean, you exercise quite a lot, don't no, you, you, at home? you need it. I was, saying to, I was saying to him, you have to get fit to go stalking here, not go stalking to get fit. It's very much that way around yeah yeah but uh at the end of it you had some luck and tell and tell me you you've done a bit of stalking now you've done lowland stalking and uh you've enjoyed this trip i hope yeah here with the caprioles club but how does it rate in relation to other stalks that you've been on this to me i can say hand on heart is the premier this and when i've been in the alps on the uh ibex and the chamois are equally satisfying i like the hard hike and i like the difficulty and i like the hard extraction which you have to do and I think that adds you know the shooting's a small part of it it's the whole hunt it's very difficult long and really rewarding and you get so much out the memories you make for me are just second to none when you're in this sort of terrain you, I loved you, every second you, of it you want to feel like you've really earned it yeah I like to I like to be falling asleep at the dinner table and sort of not being able to walk sort of the next <laughs> day I think that's really what it's all about and, and you've seen other parts of the Highlands haven't yeah. you and uh, I mean I don't know about you but by my reckoning, this is amongst the most beautiful parts. But I don't it? think I need to say it. I think the camera can see sort of what, what it looks like. It's a picture says a thousand words. It's just sunning up here. I think the sorts the stalk almost gets sick of me pulling up my phone <laughs> every hundred meters to take another vista. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well done, Charlie, and uh, congratulations on your stag and your hind. No and, cheers. Um, it's been a cracking no, week. no doubt you'll be up here again sometime. Oh, one hundred percent, Peter. You can you can bet on that. Cheers once cheers. again. Well done. The Capriolas Club hosts regular trips throughout the year to Scotland and elsewhere. If you'd like to get involved with this thriving, friendly club, then why not apply to join? You can do so via the website www.capriolasclub. Apply now.